Welcome biologists, this session we're going to be taking a look at the ultrastructure of a eukaryotic cell. You do need to be familiar with these components and how they appear within a SEM and a TEM microscope. An, a eukaryotic cell is a cell that has a nucleus. So let's take a look at these different organelles involved. So first of all, we've got our nucleus. This image here is from a, a scanning electron microscope. You can see the nuclear pores on the outside. And uh, this one here is from a transition electron microscope where you can see the darker stained genetic material on the inside. It's really important here that you know the difference here between the nucleolus, which, which is where I've got dense DNA, and the nucleus, which is the whole entire thing in this image here, where I've got this chromatin surrounded by my nuclear envelope and the nuclear pores. Nuclear pores are really important here for allowing substances in and out of the nucleus, such as mRNA leaving the nucleus. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is a continuation of the nuclear envelope and this has ribosomes attached to it which is why you can see these little dots here that appear in this transition electron microscope image. Anything in bold underlined is taken directly from the MART scheme and we need to know that the rough ER is important for protein synthesis which we'll learn about in more detail when we get onto nucleic acids. The next one is a smooth ER which is again a continuation of the rough ER but the smooth ER does not have any ribosomes on it. Therefore, it appears smooth under a TEM image. There are no dots on it. And this is involved with lipid and hormone production. We have the Golgi apparatus, which is a separate organelle within the cytoplasm. And it appears in these flattened membrane pancake style shaped sacs, where I have a cis face and a trans face. So I get incoming vesicles. Uh, the products in the side of the vesicles are modified, and then they're sent away in vesicles. So the Golgi here is involved with modifying and packaging proteins into vesicles. The Golgi can modify a protein by adding something like a carbohydrate to form a glycoprotein. Ribosomes, these can either be free within the cytoplasm or they can be attached to the rough ER and these are involved with protein synthesis um, where they use mRNA to form proteins by assembling amino acids together. Mitochondria, you do need to be aware of the internal structure of a mitochondria, so that it's a double membraned organelle. We have the inside fluid, if you like, called the matrix, and the inner membrane is folded into these cristate, these um, flattened sacs inside, which you can see clearly in a TEM image. It's really important we know here, it's very popular on a mark scheme, this, that um, ATP is made here during aerobic respiration, which we do need to be aware of. We also have lysosomes present within animal cells and lysosomes contain powerful digestive or hydrolytic enzymes. And these are used to break down products inside the cell that are no longer needed or break down organelles that aren't needed or aren't working anymore uh, through the process of hydrolysis. Chloroplasts can only be found in plant cells and this is a site of photosynthesis. And again, you do need to be aware of the internal structure of a chloroplast. So inside we've got the, we've got the double membrane first of all on the outside and then inside we have these thylakoid membranes which form stacks called grana and we also have the fluid inside here called the stroma. We've also got the plasma or cell surface membrane, really important you call it the plasma or cell surface and not just the membrane because you won't get the mark. It's made out of a phospholipid bilayer and it determines what goes in and out of the cell. We have centrioles, which are found only in animal cells, and these take part in mitosis to form spindle fibres, and they're also involved um, within the cytoskeleton. We have the cell wall, which can only be found in plant cells. The plant cells we need to know are made up of cellulose. In a cell wall in a bacteria, however, this is made up of peptidoglycan or murine. Really important that in both of these kind of cells, either in the plant or the bacteria, that um, the cell wall provides high tensile strength. If you just say strength, you don't get the mark and it's insoluble and inert. You can also find flagella sometimes on prokaryotes, which have a nine plus two arrangement inside. That's to do with the arrangement of the internal structure. And it's powered by chemosmosis to, to allow the whole cell to move. We have cilia, which can be found on eukaryotic um, cells. And these are small, like a finger like appendages which can move uh, substances with a vacuole in a plant cell which is surrounded by a tonoplast and this can become flaccid or turgid uh, due to the movement of water we also have vesicles which are membrane-bound organelles which can be used to transport substances